Hello everyone, it's James from LLP here and today I'm going to be ad-libbing this presentation about my curriculum from this year. And it's the title is called Teaching English with Games, a review of my 2020 curriculum. So as you may know, I, oh my head's going to be in a way for a lot of this, so I'm going to turn the webcam off. Uh, as you may know, um, I teach English with um, games and in 2019, um, the class was, the class utilised board games in a face-to-face -face classroom context. Um, with Corona and everything being remote, uh, Kotoba Rollers, which is the name of the class, um, Kotoba meaning word, so word rollers, you know, it's, it's a pun on games and uh, play and language. Kotoba Rollers 2020, I used digital games in a remote teaching context. So I'm going to first compare and contrast the, the models uh, very briefly before showing you the details of what I did uh, this year. So uh, this is Cotable Rollers 2019 and you can see that the cycle goes from researching about games, um, so choosing a game to play, uh, learn the game, play the game, analyze the play session based on a transcription of play recordings, um, so improving the language for a second gameplay session, which is also recorded and transcribed and analysed here. And then finally a report. Um, I'm rushing through this because you can read about this in my paper in uh, LLP. I have a couple in there now where I've introduced this framework. So this is 2019 framework and this is 2020 framework. So the basic structure, the underlying structure of the framework did not change significantly between the two instantiations. Um, for a very detailed view of what changed between the two, there's this slide. However, I'm not going to go into it in too much details here, uh, in too much detail here. The bolded areas are areas of the, of the framework that I changed um, between the two. So this is 2019, this is 2020. What I am going to focus on are a few key things that changed, and that is basically around the materials that I created. I created new materials, new worksheets um, for students and uh, the technology used was, was also a lot different obviously being in a remote teaching context. So I'm going to introduce these uh, one by one. Uh, let's start with this then. So in 2019 the board game, the games that we used were board and card games only. Uh, in 2020 games were video games or digital versions of these board and card games. Um, in place of the classroom for the two, uh, 2019 version of Cotoba Rollers, um, this was augmented by using a Discord server where all classes, all students would meet, uh, make their own channels, but I'll, I'll introduce this again later. Students utilised their smartphones a lot um, during the class in 2019, and that was for doing all of these activities, uh, mostly for searching game rules, um, using it for recording gameplay audio, and then g generating a transcription of the, the gameplay audio. And we obviously utilised print worksheets in the 2019 curriculum. In 2020, games, video, video games, Discord, used for these activities, uh, Google Docs was the worksheet that we used. So instead of printed worksheets, we used Google Doc worksheets. These were completely uh, made fresh, uh, new, and uh, all the content was made for the remote teaching context. So I'll introduce that very shortly. I also utilized OneDrive, and that was uh, as a place for students to store their gameplay recordings. This, this year, instead of using smartphones and very small audio files, uh, students were recording their gameplay audio video and uploading them to my shared OneDrive, which has, a, I think it's a two terabyte uh, storage space um, given by the university. So we use that to store the recordings and also the montage videos, which we'll look at uh, a little bit later. And students also, also utilized and used these uh, video editing software uh, tools, such as OBS, ATI, UTL, uh, Adobe Premiere, etc. And that was to create their best play montages. So. Uh, what, what I'm going to do next is, is look specifically at Discord and how I use that. Uh, Google Docs and how I utilize the Google Docs affordances for comments and uh, sharing and, and things like this. And finally, we're going to look um, at the montages and what that actually means. So let's get into this. The games that student cho students chose to play this year were, among us, Apex Legends, Coup, which is a board and card game, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Minecraft, 
One Night Ultimate Werewolf, again the online version, uh, same as Ku here. Resistance Avalon, which was something that I, I t said was a very good game and, and that was my particular influence on, on this game here. And finally, We Were Here, which is a two-player information gap style game. So th these were the games that were chosen this year. Again, I mentioned that uh, if you want to read about my 2019 model, you can go and check it out on the LLP website. Uh, the URL is on here, and I'll make the slides available after or in the description to this video. So yes, if, if you do want to see my 2019 um, framework for teaching with board games uh, and TBLT, uh, from a TBLT perspective, please visit, visit the site. Right, so Discord. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Discord, please Google it. It is, um, it was originally a tool which was promoted f towards gamers as a place for them to chat while they're playing games. This was in a time when um, ga game in-game chat was limited to text. And so you had tools like TeamSpeak and Ventrilo and Mumble. Uh, and Discord came along as being this kind of Skype killer for gamers. Uh, it has since been rebranded as your place to chat or your place to talk. So it's not specifically for gamers anymore, but groups and uh, communities that have a shared interest. It's a, it's a very popular tool. Um, the way that I set it up for my class is like this, basically, on this slide. So... Uh, if you're not familiar with Discord, please please take a look. But essentially, you can make a category of channels, and then you can assign permissions to all of the channels within the category. So, for example, this category is called the 19 RD channels, which is my second year computer science students. And then all of the students that signed up to my class and joined the Discord server would be given this 19 RD role. So these are the roles on the server. So if you're given this role then you're able to see these channels. If you do not have the 19 RD role, you're not able to see these channels. And so you can imagine that I had this typical Discord setup per class. This is the second grade computer science class. I'd have the same setup for the first grade computer science class, the first grade engineering class, and the second grade architecture class. Um, here it says, notice the English speaker role. Um, yes, I actually had a category of channels which were opened up to the public. Um, so that students could game and play with, uh, n not, not necessarily native, but English speakers, both during, this was a kind of exit task of the framework. Um, in terms of task-based language teaching, we had pedagogical tasks, which, which led up to this exit task. And the exit task was for my students to play um, the game that they'd been learning with native English speakers or English speakers, not necessarily from uh, native countries. So... They also played outside of the class in those global channels. Now, um, if you look at the, the typical setup of one class category, I would have um, a channel which I would post the class schedule, a channel which was used for general messages. Oh, these are text channels, by the way. We'd have a channel that the students made themselves um, per group. So the Apex Legends group would have a, a text channel, Among Us, Resistance Avalon, and One Night Ult Ultimate Werewolf. They also had a, a channel. Uh, we had a general classroom channel where we all congregated at the start of class. This is a voice channel. And then once we split up into groups, they would go into their own voice channel to chat and discuss and to do work together. So this is a typical setup of one category in Discord. Okay. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Discord, please let me know. I can go into that in much more detail, showing examples and how to set it up and all that. I think Discord has really been the savior tool of my um, teaching this year. So yeah, it's it's a big, I'm a big proponent of its use over other tools like Zoom. Um, that of course they do have their their purpose. Zoom. One of the strong things about Zoom is that you can record the video for each session with a very, very light file and it's recorded to the cloud or to each member's computer. There is no recording function of video in Discord. You have to use third party plugins or different software like OBS to record your screen. So yeah, definitely Zoom has some positives, but um, I think that Discord pros and cons, they outweigh Zooms.
again, I won't, I won't go into, into it too, in too much detail, but it's a, it's a very good tool. It's permanent. That's the main thing. Um, okay, so that was Discord and how I set up my, my classes um, channels. I also utilize Google Docs throughout the project. So I'm going to introduce um, how I did that. So this is the, a lengthy part of the talk. So I would create a template file, which you, as you can see in the, um, the navigation pane, each of these headings is an activity that the students must do over the course of the, the framework. So from lesson one to lesson seven, lesson eight, lesson nine, they would come to this doc and fill in the sections as they went along. Uh, don't worry, I'll go into each one of these as we go along. So the students would make a copy of this worksheet and share that copy with their group in uh, Discord, in Discord channel, terrible grammar, in their, in their own Discord channel, essentially. So that all participants could, uh, all group members could look at the same document and work together. Um, and the positives of the, the navigation pane for a start is that all activities are shown in this pane so that students can see where they are, see what they've got coming up, and they can browse right to the end um, to, to see what they're going to be doing at the end of the course. So yeah, Google Docs is a fantastic way. Instead of giving a print worksheet each week without saying, you know, well, this is what's coming up, like without giving them a book that they can browse through, the Google document exists there permanently that they can go and check. So again, the, the digital file was um, really useful this year. So in terms of the activities that they did, this is the first activity, uh, which is to write down, uh, well, so they, they wrote down impro important words for their game. And this is from the Apex team. Uh, the, the top line is, is a, a dummy. This is the one that I made for them to, to kind of copy. And you can see that they have put in the verbs over here. And these are specific to um, Apex Legends. Nouns here and then adjectives here. Very nice, badass, kakena. Okay. Following that, they make a flow chart of their gameplay. <laughs> I thought this one was particularly good, which is why I've included it. Um, fight, 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 win. It is a very loose flow chart, but here's a question. So they, they've managed to, to understand that the, di the diamond means there's a, a kind of branch going on here. So win, fight. If you win fight and you're the champion, do you not do you not want to start again? I don't know, but yeah, they create a, a flow chart so they can understand the the way that the game works visually in this um, step by step process systematic format. Following that, they would watch YouTube videos together, and I I promoted them to use this Sync Tube website where they can all watch together, and they would fill in the time, what happened, and what words or phrases they heard the the English speakers saying. So we have here, teki ga iru ka mikate ni kiku toki. So asking a, a friend, asking somebody on their team if there's a, uh, an enemy in front. And they found this expression here, is there a team on my ping, which was uh, kind of interesting to them. Um, so the idea here is to watch the YouTube videos and then hopefully you can use some of these expressions in your own gameplay. Um, one, one point here is that um, I would give feedback, whether it's a, a great expression or you make them if they've made a mistake, and and just promote them to to check um, something here. So this is kind of a teacher feedback, um, right where they need it on the, the 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 phrase or the the error or anything like that. So that's how we're using comments here. Following that, they would play the game in Japanese and translate what they said into English. So for example, I I explicitly stated that one player in their group uh, should not play while they're while the other group members are playing in Japanese and that group member would be looking at the document here and writing in their Japanese expressions then after they finished they would translate those into English so here's a, an example of that so again they're, they're kind of boosting their English uh, knowledge by going from the Japanese first into into English so all of this work is, is what I consider the pre-play phase um, before they actually play in English for real. Um, once they have played in English for, for a class, then it's the transcription. So they, they record their gameplay, they transcribe what they have done. And the transcription you can see here is 
has been put into the, the worksheet. And I, I've put this, this purple box here. This is kind of, we found something. I, I go to each group, I look at their errors, and occasionally I will do this, like within the transcription itself, I'll talk about the, the grammar that the, they need or maybe just refresh their memories about, you know, for example, here they've put, I want to vault, where vault is a noun. So I was saying, well, you, you want a, not want to. Um, so this is um, kind of in, in time uh, within their own transcription. This is another way that I would do feedback. Okay. Uh, following the transcription and subsequent analysis, they would complete this activity, which was the post-play reflection. And my intention with this was this part here. Okay, I wanted them to look at their performance, think how well or not they are speaking English during their play session, find something that they can improve, and then write how they could improve it this lesson. So it was a kind of to get them to focus on what they can actually do within the time, not like very vague, oh, I need to improve my English. I need something very specific that they could do and, and maybe provide a website or a link that they could go to to find out more about that. So here you can see that this group has done that. Uh, following that, they do a self-evaluation. Um, this is the same criteria that I used myself when I assessed their first gameplay. So how accurate were they? How fluent were they? Um, you know, how much English were they using? How well did they understand the game words and the, the rules and the knowledge of the rules? How how well did they cooperate and what their total score was here? So this is a self-evaluation. And during the reflection stage, they also made some extra notes at the bottom. So reflected on improved their performances. Here you can see again, uh, some English that they would like to use. There's a team on my ping, blah, 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 cover me and stuff like this. We also looked at some pronunciation stuff here, uh, which is kind of interesting. There, the final activity, the final project for them was to create a best play montage. If you're a gamer, you may be familiar with seeing pro gamers pushing out uh, maybe a 10 minute video of their best clips. For example, Call of Duty, they may do a 10 minute video of their best headshots or whatever. Um, I was very much inspired by this and by American football, where they create a montage of clips to be submitted to coaches who may want to hire them. So the, this idea of instead of me going to your group and watching you play and, and writing down a score, I want you to show me. So the onus was on them. They have to show me their best play montages of using English during the gameplay. And they also also had to rationalize or justify, sorry, they had to justify why they were using that clip in their video. So the idea is that they already had the recordings of the video. Um, they already had the transcriptions of those recordings. They had to go through the transcriptions, cut out the section that they think where they perform quite well, and put this as a clip, um, a clip of one, two, um, five different clips that they could then submit as a short video plus this in the worksheet. So what you can see here is that each clip that they submit has to, they have to fill in these boxes to, to show me what happened. So somebody was knocked down. I, I've removed the name here. And then the transcription of the speech. So they're speaking thanks. There is fighting now. Get up before I kill you myself. Um, your reflection. I could use cool English. Uh, this is just um, a translation of this above. So this student was very proud of himself for having watched videos, found some cool English, and during the gameplay, at that critical moment, he was able to use it himself um, as part of his gameplay. So, uh, And finally, they had to put some tags, some, just some generic hashtags that, again, would, would focus my attention on why they have submitted this clip. Uh, so this student has put, well, he was accurate, of course, uh, fluent, and the hashtag cool. So in terms of the montages, I am collecting them now from students. And here's another one, actually. Uh, so I use these for instructor evaluation. So what happened here? Uh, so this is the, the same group. They have collected some items and they're going to go to a new area. This is the, the transcription of that play. And then this is K. He's 
saying, if you found light mag, please tell me. Hammond, okay. Oh, I want to check next area on my ping. So the good points of his speech here is that uh, so even he made a good choice in terms of the gameplay but he was also able to do that using English so he's, he's proud of himself for that uh, bad I want to go on my ping I want to check so he said that he could have improved his uh, he, he could have improved his sentence here so that's a bad point uh, and he missed the before area so he's he's cognizant of his errors, but he's still proud of this um, ability to play and use correct English during the play session. So the tags used here are game words, slang, grammar, cooperation. And so each student would be um, creating three or four clips, putting them in a video, submitting them to my OneDrive, and I would check the video as evidence of their work and also uh, the worksheet to see why they have submitted those clips. Um, and so the montages, um, here are some photographs from students that have given me permission to share them already. This is just a screenshot from the start of one uh, student's Final Fantasy XIV montage. Uh, this is during the video and this student has also put subtitles on the video um, to show who's speaking and what they're saying, which was not actually mandated. She went to the trouble to do this um, because she was interested in, in, you know, editing the video. So here's another one from a same group, different student. And she's even gone and made kind of funny um, subtitles to match the feeling of the game at the same time. So, yeah, really, really creative work and good, good uh, examples of their English speaking, essentially. Here's one from um, Among Us. And this student, he used, again used subtitles and he also matched the subtitle color to the player so this is the black player speaking and so you can see the the words here in black regarding these montages i will be uploading them to my own youtube channel soon this is a link to that which you can find in the description and the 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 star mark here the asterisk um I, i'll only be up, uploading the videos the video montages from students that actually give me permission so uh, look forward to those and that is a brief summary of what I have done in terms of Kotoba Rollers 2020. Um, I'm really excited to share the students' work with you, and I'm really excited to talk about this in longer form at uh, various conferences in 2021. So if you have any questions about what I've done here, and if you'd like to emulate this yourself, I have the worksheet for this that you can have for free. I mean, it's it's something I've developed um, you're free to remix it or use it as is uh, in your own context so yeah that's all from me and if you're interested in joining LLP um, there is going to be a link in the description as well so yeah please stay in, stay in touch and I hope 2021 brings us um, <laughs> well it can't be much worse than 2020 so yeah I look forward to to doing more of this stuff more uh Ludic Language Pedagogy into 2021 with you all. Thank you and take care.